Hey, it's Ben here from the Strength Factory and today I'm talking about crank length and why I think you might be better off going from a set of these down to a set of short cranks like these. Crank length is something that you probably haven't given a great deal of thought to. Of all the things going on in the bike, how long your cranks are, hasn't really been on the radar for, for a long time as far as I can tell. Uh, and it's quite simple. If you're on like an XL bike or maybe a large, then your cranks are probably going to be 175 mil, okay, from the axle to the middle of the, um, the pedal there. Um, and then if you're on a medium, maybe the 170, and then maybe if you're on a size small, you might get some 165s or something like that. And that's as far as it went, but I bet that most of the time you didn't even look or care how long your cranks were, and neither did I. Fast forward a few years, and Joe Barnes, in collaboration with Hope, brings out these 155 millimeter cranks, okay? And now there's more and more brands bringing out these shorter cranks and they're even being specced on a wide range of e-bikes in particular. Now, what's the point? Why would you want a shorter crank? Think of our cooler cousins on motocross bikes, okay? Um, and any motorbike, because they don't have to pedal, their feet are level. And when your feet are level next to each other, guess what? You're more balanced, you're more symmetrical, and your ability to turn left and turn right, in theory, should be the same. Instead of this offset position, we find ourselves in on a bike where you've got a forward foot and a back foot, so you're either turning away from the front foot or towards the front foot, and so on. So that is really where I was coming to it from, this idea that I wanted my feet to be more in line with each other, so I'd have a more balanced feel on the bike, for technical terrain for cornering and then second to that with modern bikes with low bottom brackets a lot of travel running some sag and technical climbs on e-bikes is i just wanted to hit my pedals less i run these lovely carda 10.4 flat pedals they're rad bits of kit and they're really strong but just smashing them all the time and if you've had, had a pedal strike crash like i have you know they are always painful, they're always the worst crashes. So if we can hit our pedals less on climbs and maybe going down the trail, then that can only be a good thing. If you're enjoying this content, or if I've ever said anything that's been vaguely useful to you, then how about do me a favor, hit that like button, drop a comment, and subscribe to the channel. So what's the big deal? I mean, when we put the other cranks next to it, I mean, there's not much. This is 170, that's 155. It's 15 mil, okay? It's not a great deal. But then when you do that twice, obviously that's 30 mil difference. So when my feet are level on the pedals, my feet are 30 mil closer together. And I'll be honest, right from the start, I felt one thing improve. It was my right hand turns. Now I'm a bit like Derek Zoolander where I can turn left all day. I'm not an ambi-turner. It's a problem I had since I was a baby. I can't turn left. I'm right foot forward, turning left always feels great. I can visualize it, I can feel it, I can ride it harder. If I was doing NASCAR, I'd be on the money. Turning right was always a different matter and I've always struggled. And quite simply, the shorter cranks, bringing my stance more balanced, has helped me to turn right better, helping me carry more exit speed, be a better rider, and to ride faster. What's not to like? Now, when it comes to shorter cranks, there are a few other considerations and things to think about. Some of you will care about these, others won't. The first one is that when my foot is in the bottom position here, at the bottom of the pedal stroke, is that obviously that is now 15 mil higher. And so now here, I've, my seat post, which is basically slammed here before, it's now got this much more exposed and so when i'm descending okay with my saddle down it's now 15 mil higher and if you're someone who struggles for clearance or maybe you don't have the biggest drop post then you may want to consider a longer drop post in order to take out that slack and give you more clearance for me i haven't even noticed couldn't tell the difference it's not a big issue the second one is interesting now on hope's website they talk about uh, possibly using a different chain ring because obviously the length of your lever is shorter so you've got less leverage okay uh, when you press on the pedal to then turn the gear to turn the cassette 
and so on. And they suggest that you actually go to uh, an easier chain ring. So go down two teeth. So from a 34 to a thir uh, 32 or a 32 to a 30 and so on. Now, whilst I guess in theory that makes sense, uh, in practice I felt absolutely zero need to do that. Because to me, after the first couple of rides, where it did feel like I was pedaling a kid's bike in little circles, it now feels completely normal, I've completely forgotten, and I guess maybe I'm just simple. If you press harder on the pedals, you go faster. If you press lighter on the pedals, you don't go as fast. And it's as simple as that. I use my gears, I can still climb everything, and I haven't changed my gearing setup at all. The other thing to think about in terms of pedaling and your gearing is that We've now got a smaller circumference of the circle. So as my feet go round, one revolution, they travel a shorter distance. So if I'm doing 60 RPM, a cadence of 60 RPM, my feet are actually traveling a shorter distance and they're traveling slower. So maybe this setup lends itself more to a stronger, more of a mashing kind of um, riding style. And that's probably how I am, you know, I'm pretty strong, got big legs, I'm happy in a low gear. Whereas if you're maybe a lighter build, more of a spinner high cadence, then maybe uh, this isn't gonna work as well for you, or maybe you are gonna have to reduce the chain ring size. Another potential advantage for some riders is for those riders who struggle in particular with hip mobility. The smaller circle is gonna make your life a little bit easier. So picture this, I'm sure you've all seen it. I know have many times. I'm driving down the road in my van and I get caught behind some roadies, all right? And at the back of the roadie group, it's quite a big guy. And as you look from behind, his knees come out to the side. It's almost always a bigger guy. It's just how it is, all right? I'm not judging, all right? And what happens is, as they come out, the knees come out to the side. And I've even talked to people like this, and they joke, oh, it's my belly or whatever. It's not their belly. It's limited hip flexion, okay? It's a lack of mobility to lift your knee. And so what's happening is the knee has to come out to the side to kind of work around and get around it to get over the top of the pedal stroke. Now, if we assume that the bottom position is a constant, i.e. your bottom position is always with a slight knee, then by having shorter cranks, it basically opens this up. In the top position, this angle is more open, it's easier and less harsh on your mobility, if you like, for those riders who struggle. Whereas the longer cranks, my knee needs to be up here instead, and it's a more of an acute angle for me to pedal. So if you do struggle with hip pain and hip mobility, uh, and if you're someone whose knees kick out to the side, then you might wanna consider some shorter cranks to sort that out for you. On that note of sorting this out, or just sorting your body out in general, don't forget, get in the description below this and check out my range of online programs. If you want to ride further, if you want to ride faster, if you want to ride pain-free and just enjoy your riding more, then I have got a program for you. Remember, all the programs are covered by my 100% money back guarantee. So when you sign up to a program, it's risk-free. You either pay a bit of money and enjoy your riding more, or you don't and you get your money back. It's as simple as that. So check them out below there. And if you've got any questions, hit me up and I'll get straight back to you. So are short cranks for you? I mean, it's completely up to you. Um, I was completely happy with my setup before, but now I've tried this, I can't go back, okay? I absolutely love my short crank setup. These 155s from Hope are brilliant. The only downside is that uh, they don't currently do them for the EP8 motor, so I can't have a matching set on my e-bike. Now, luckily my e-bike comes with 165 cranks, like a lot do, so it's in that ballpark. It's a bit closer anyway. As for like tall or short people, I mean, if you're a shorter person, then 100% I would get on a shorter set of cranks. Having said that, it's been really interesting to see that uh, Seb Stott on Pink Bike, formerly of MB UK, a rider and tester who I massively respect, who's also several inches taller than me, big strapping lad over six foot, he is all in on the short crank phenomenon and in fact he's saying they should be spec'd on all e-bikes and he's riding them as well, so go figure. The only downside for me is, well, they're expensive. Cranks are expensive and for me, switching from Shimano to Hope also meant a new bottom bracket. 
So if I bought all of this, it would have been about £300, um, which is a big upgrade, okay? It's a lot of cash to splash. But if you are in the market for some new cranks, then check it out. Hope, I can thoroughly recommend. They've been bomb-proof. There's a link in the description below if you want to check out a set. Um, but there are other brands out there now doing these shorter cranks. So, have you tried shorter cranks? Are you thinking of trying them? If you have or if you're going to, then let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Thanks so much.